So now for this first example only, I want to give you sort of a slideware virtual debugging version of stepping through the assembly code and seeing what all changes. So we're going to basically go through all of this code. We're going to see what changes on the stack. We're going to see what changes in the registers. And so I have a particular key here that will apply to all these upcoming slides. So this blue X or blue text will mean that that has been an assembly instruction which has just been executed. We haven't actually executed any of them yet. Red values for modified values as a result of a particular assembly instruction execution and green for the starting values before uh, anything has actually happened here. So let's assume that the RIP is set for 1400101010 aka the start of main and no assembly instruction has been executed yet. So what are the initial values that we see? RAX, and we'll say has one. I mean, these values are taken from the debugger later on so that they completely correspond to that. But RAX has one. RSP is set to 14FE08, so somewhere up here on the stack. And it has a particular value stored in it right now, which is going to actually be the return address, because we're saying we're on this line, but we haven't actually executed it, which means someone somewhere had to call main. And when they called main, a return address got placed onto the stack so that we can get back to whatever that code was that called main. So RSP starts here. All right, now blue X, we have executed sub RSP 28. So that's going to take RSP current value minus 28 and store the value back into RSP. So RSP was up here and now it subtracts or goes down by hex 28. And we can see the corresponding change over here in the RSP register. Next assembly instruction, call func, and the particular address that func is at is 14001000. And so the side effect of the call assembly instruction we said is that a return address will get placed onto the stack. So what is the return address? 1401019. 1401019 is the address of the assembly instruction after the call assembly instruction. So call, We'll jump to function, and when function returns back, it's going to not go back to the call because that would cause an infinite loop. It's going to go back to the assembly instruction after the call. So RSP moved down, it was up here, and then it moved down by eight because of this return address being pushed onto the stack. Value change there as well. All right, next assembly instruction. So you can see that the RIP has moved up here to 14, 0, 0, 0, 1000. Now, when this assembly instruction is executed, it's not going to do anything to the stack. No changes there, no changes here, but it is going to change the value of EAX or RAX to X beef. Now, you can't tell in this particular example, but we you saw that the assembly moved it to EAX, not RAX. And so in reality, when you move a value to AEX, it's going to actually zero extend the value. So basically it's gonna fill in the top 32 bits with zeros. Now, previous versions of the class had, you know, just happened to have a nice RAX value that showed that you were smashing the upper bits, but this one, it doesn't show. So I just have to point it out to you. And here's the section from the manual that says, if you have a 32 bit operand, uh, it's going to zero extend into a 64-bit result in the general purpose register. Now, one quick point I want to make, this zero extension only applies when you're writing to registers, not to memory. So if you move 32 bits into memory, only 32 bits are going to change. But when you're moving this, you know, 32-bit operand, the EAX of a assembly instruction that's, you know, moving into a register, then the code, then the hardware is going to behave as per the manual says, and it's going to stick zeros into the upper 32 bits. All right, and then so just pausing here briefly, we are having executed this assembly line, we've put hex beef into EAX, RAX, and so what is the state of the stack right now? Well, we said that the beginning of the stack was this return address back to whatever function uh, was executing before main. So this is part of the frame of the function that executed before main. And then we have main, which had you know some undefined big chunk of allocation that it did, this RSP 28. So hex 28 worth of space right here. And then when main called to func, it pushed a return address onto the stack. So we consider those return addresses part of the 
calling the functions frame. So the caller was right here was the function before main, so the return address is part of its frame. The caller here is main, and so the return address is part of main's frame. But we actually never see Funk make use of its stack frame in any way because it's such a trivially simple function. It just moves a value into AAX or RAX, which is the return register by convention, and then it's going to return. So basically, there's never even a stack frame for function. All right, back to execution. Well, return is now going to execute. And so it's going to pop the value off the top of the stack. What was that value? It was this address of the assembly instruction after call. So it's going to pop that value into RIP so that the next code is going to execute here rather than, you know, for instance, just following through to here. And then we're going to consider that undefined because the popping automatically increments RSP by eight. And so now RSP is pointing right here. Next assembly instruction to execute is the one at 14.000.10.19, the move assembly instruction. So you can see it doesn't even care what was returned in RAX, it's just going to immediately collaborate with hex food instead. No changes to the stack on this particular assembly instruction. And then add RSP plus 28, so we saw subtract here and then it's balancing it out. So rather than using a bunch of push, 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 pop, 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 it's just subtracting the stack pointer down and adding the stack pointer back up to balance it out so that the next assembly instruction, ret, can pop the return address off the stack and go back to whichever function called main. And that value was 14.000.1349. And again, automatically as part of that return is the increment of RSP plus eight. So a couple of notes about that call of subroutine one. The first is that obviously func is basically dead code. It returns a value that is never used. And practically speaking, if you had any sort of optimizations on, the compiler would know that this thing only ever returns hex food and it would just optimize it all out and throw it away. But that's specifically why we turn off some of the compiler optimizations so that we can show you simple assembly for simple C code. Also, we don't really know why it did that sub RSP28 and add RSP28. Didn't seem to have a lot of point to it. You could imagine that, for instance, when it was right here, it could have just not done that and then allowed main to, you know, push a return address here instead of like jumping down and jumping back up. So we're going to consider that yet another mystery for our mystery listery. And we'll come back to that later on after we've learned a little bit more about how function calling works. Okay, and building up our simple stack diagram a little bit more, this is the same assembly code as we showed before. And so what is the first thing that's gonna go onto the stack? It's going to be the return address of the thing that invokes main, which happens to be called invoke main. Push that onto the stack. Then main is going to have its own sort of notional frame. And when main calls to foo, it's going to have a return address pushed onto the stack. When foo calls to bar, it's going to have a return address pushed onto the stack. And bar will have notionally a frame, which will have some stuff stored in it that we don't know about yet. So again, this is the slightly more complex version. Now that we know about calling functions in C equals call ret assembly instructions, we know that the stack frames are going to have return addresses inside the stack frame of whichever function calls the next function. Okay, so we relatively quickly just added five new assembly instructions. And so, boom, boom, boom. Oh, move was a lot. Look at that, look at all that. Well, that's not bad. Like we already, only a couple of modules in, already know well over 50% of the assembly instructions that exist in web browsers. So we are just chugging along at an incredible pace.